guys, for those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Laura. I'm your host. I'm a wedding photographer and artist. And today we're going to talk about wedding styling. So as you can see in front of me here, we have two styling boards. I actually um, made these last night in preparation for today. Uh, I've been meaning to get new ones for my wedding flat lace. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm pretty crafty. I'm just going to make some. And they actually turned out really well. So I'm excited. Today's my first day using them. So uh, what you guys are seeing here, I will be seeing for myself for the first time too. But um, I'm going to also talk a little bit about how I made them, just in case you want to make your own. But yeah, welcome back. So today we're doing something a little different. We're going to talk about uh, some tips I have for flat lays, for wedding flat lays. And if you don't know what a flat lay is, we go and talk about it. So a flat lay is really just a picture from an aerial view of details or imitations or anything wedding related or anything anything related. You can do flat lays of other things like food and stuff like that too. But today we're talking specifically about wedding flat lays. When I first started out in wedding photography, between uh, styling flat lays and posing couples, those were the only really two problems I had. I had everything else pretty much down. Those two specifically are like, you they really testing your creativity. And you know, it, they have a learning curve. You're not going to, if you're just starting out in photography or just started out as a wedding photographer, you're not going to learn these overnight. It's taken me honestly like three years to get to where I think I'm pretty good at them. <laughs> so, and I'm not saying I'm a pro. Like I, I worked with people who are immensely talented at styling flat lays and it doesn't take them any time at all and it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. I am just here to help you get started. So you know what flat lays are. You know that they are important to have in your wedding gallery for your bride. You know your bride's probably expecting it because she's seen them on Pinterest and Instagram and whatever else, but you don't know where to start. So I'm just gonna talk about the basic things that you need to style invitation suite or style um, jewelry or something like that. Just the basics, the very minimal things. So first you need something to style on. You can buy um, a styling board or a styling mat. When I first started out, I just used a white poster board for my first few weddings, which was not the best, but it was something. As for colors go, that's really up to you. I have a, like a white, um, kind of an off-white one here, and this pink. It's a dark pink, that one. Um, when I painted one last year, I was using a painted one that I made. It was like a dark gray color. It really doesn't matter. A lot of photographers love the cream colored ones. Um, they're like the linen or canvas like these are, but they're cream colored because they look really nice with, uh, bright and airy. <coughs> I'm sorry bright and airy editing, and that's great. I am not a fan of the cream colored ones just because of how they look in my editing. I think they look too muddy, but it just really depends on what your preference is. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not gonna make a difference to your bride as long as it goes with her details and looks pretty. I use this sometimes too for like a moodier flat lay. Uh, this really works really well. It looks super pretty. Uh, the wood grain behind it and it get, brings out, you know, like the just dark tones of it. So you can use something like this too. Next, the thing I recommend most is to get a styling carrying, like a, a styling kit is what we call them. So this is my kit. It's just a, uh, a plastic tote from Michaels and inside it has a top shelf and then like a bottom area here. So this is what I use. I bring it to every wedding. Um, I bring all of my styling with me to every wedding. You don't have to. Uh, it's probably honestly smarter to just pick out colors beforehand that you know are going to go with that bride's style. A lot of people like to use stamps. I have some vintage stamps in here. A lot of people like to use those. I have some um, wax stamps, those kind of stuff. So just have a just kind of a collection. You don't have to buy this all at once. This is taking me like three years to build up. When I first started, I had like one ribbon and one ring box and maybe some scissors or something. That was it. I didn't really have much. I think maybe some like, I have these fake flowers in here just in case I can't get real flowers uh, at the wedding. So I have like some kind of florals in it. And that's pretty much all I had when I first started. So don't see this and get super overwhelmed. It's really not a big deal to start with a little bit because you really don't need much to get a really pretty flat light. So when I'm working with 
the flat lace today to show you guys. I'm just going to use pretty much like the bare minimum stuff so um, that I can show you how to style with like what you have. You're going to want to remind your bride to have her invitation suite with her when you come to her wedding. So either the wedding planner or the bride or a friend of the bride, make sure they bring an extra wedding invitation unless the bride's sending you one and then you can just save yours and use it as... Um, use it for your details. If the they don't do invitations, you don't have to worry about that and you just style like the bridal details or shoes, necklace, um, veil, you know, that kind of stuff on the styling board. Now I'm going to style a, just a really simple setup for you. And then we're gonna do with um, some invitation suites that I have laying around. And then we are going to do some bridal details and I will give you some tips as we go along with that. Okay, so this is the first flat lay that I have for you guys. So it's just really simple. It's just a style. This is their invitation suite, just an envelope invitation. So this is actually my calligraphy. Um, I just made one for this envelope because we made one for this invitation because they didn't have one. But yeah, it's just a super simple styling. I use their envelope, their invitation, some stamps here, some ribbon, uh, ring box, and then some just some greenery. That's some fake greenery that I bring with me to all my weddings just in case I can't get real greenery. Real greenery is definitely prettier than fake, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So, a couple things I wanna point out. Um, this first picture here is of more horizontal design, so a horizontal layout. And then if I wanted to make it more vertical, I tighten everything in like here and make it more of a vertical design. So I could just flip the board around and redesign it, but sometimes you don't have time for that. And so just putting everything in, pushing everything in a little bit and kind of squishing it together makes it more of like a vertical design. You want your viewer's eye to continue through the piece. So that's why we have the greenery up here and then you see the invitation suite, you have the stamps, the ribbon, the ring box, and then down here. You want it to continue kind of in a circle, so you want everything to be laid out where the eye is continuously going around looking at things. To add dimension to your flat lays, so it looks a lot different. Let me show you. Okay, this... This flat lay looks a lot different than the flat lay I had before. So you can see the dimension difference in the imitation suite. So you can buy acrylic styling blocks for your flat lays. They actually make stuff specifically for that. Or you can do what a lot of us do and just use whatever you got. So I use the tops of my ring boxes if I'm not using them. Or I have other ring boxes in my kit that I can use for that. So I'll just put a ring box here lay the envelope on top just so it gives them, it has dimension and then I just use this other little I had this bowl piece out because I was going to use it in it but instead I just decided to use it for dimension on the envelope so see how much better that looks it gives it so much more uh, dimension and keeps the eye going that way also okay so this is my setup for the bridal details so I have the shoes, the necklace ring, ribbon, and some greenery. Super simple. Honestly, with bridal details, simple is best. You don't want to get too crowded because then your eye is going to be going every which way and you're not going to be able to actually like appreciate the details. I mean, really the gist of it all is just, you know, get us something to style on, get a few details to style with, and practice the hell out of this stuff. Like, a great way to practice is find a calligrapher in your area or online that's willing to send you some invitation suites or some envelopes that they've done that maybe they don't need anymore. I don't know how many photographers I have sent invitation suites or envelopes to in the past for them to take pictures of. And usually I just trade pictures, so I'll send them the invitation suites, they send me pictures back, and then usually they send the invitation suites back to me so that I can use them again. It's really helpful that way. Um, find someone to work with with that. Or even just buy one envelope. 
or one invitation from a company. It's super cheap, like three bucks or something, I'm pretty sure, to buy like just one. Um, some companies might not let you buy just one, but if they do, take advantage of it. Or even like Minted or uh, Wedding Divas, I think it's called, or Wedding Chicks, something like that. Um, if you go on their website and sign up for their newsletter, they'll send you like a an example pack of invitation suites. And I did that when I was getting married as like examples for the ones I've made. And I, I still have some of those and I, I used them all the time when I was learning how to do these. I just really just do it with whatever you can. Honestly, like if you guys have any questions about follies, I'd love to do more videos about them. I'd love to be able to teach you more about them or help you out in any way that I can. So drop the questions below if you do have questions about follies because I really enjoy doing them, so I would love to help you out more. Let's do the more complicated uh, flat lay, and then at the end I'm going to give you some tips on making your own styling mat for pretty freaking cheap, so stay tuned. <laughs> I made these just so you guys can save a few bucks if you are not looking to buy a professional grade one. These aren't going to be as good as the professional grade ones for sure, but they'll do the job. You need a canvas, stapler, scissors, and fabric. Four things. That is it. Just a canvas, stapler, scissors, and fabric. You need, uh, it doesn't really matter which fabric you choose the sturdier fabric the better and then on the back of the board you just you just cut out a piece leave like an inch inch and a half or yeah i'd say an inch or two inches on the back on each side so that you can staple it on there but so you're just gonna i just start with one side just it tight um i had my husband pull it while i was stapling um watch for fingers, <laughs> but you just want to pull it tight and then staple it like they do to make the canvas material itself. So you just staple it, fold in the edges, go to the next side, that's it, that's it. Canvas, material, stapler, scissors, that's all. $15 total for each canvas, so $30 for two canvases. Like I said, not professional grade, but they will do, and I'm excited to use them this season, so that's about it. Um, how, what you need for styling, how to style. Oh, there is one thing I did not mention when I was styling. I need you ring shots without a ring box. It's sometimes hard for to get the rings to stand together. So if you use dental wax, you know, like back when you had braces and you had to put the wax on the braces so you wouldn't cut up the inside of your mouth. Yeah, I remember those days. Those were super fun. But if you buy dental wax at one it's like a dollar just um, put a little ball of it onto whatever you're styling, put the ring on top, it sits there perfect, it's almost translucent, translucent, and if you can see it in the picture, it's a super quick edit out. It's amazing. It's a godsend for those ring shots without the rings, or ring box, ring shots without the ring boxes, or anything else that you're styling that you want to keep down. Um, so acrylic styling boxes, or, or just using your uh, ring boxes and then the dental wax are two, like, probably didn't think about it, but you really thank me for getting those. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to chat about it. Uh, tell me if you like this kind of video, what have you. Have a great rest of your day, night, morning, whatever it is for you, and I'll see you next time.